recording also. Okay, so this is a very, very typical um, statistical question or problem. Okay, you have, uh, you have a farmer and the farmer wants to investigate the effects of a new fertilizer. Right. Okay, and then the uh, random sample of 150 pots is harvested. So basically you have 150 um, pots here. So you are supposed to have 150 numbers here both uh, without fertilizer and with fertilizer. And each, right. um, each pot, uh, you just count the number of piece. So just, just uh, look at these numbers alone. Uh, I start to appreciate that um, with fertilizer, you tend to have uh, more piece in each pot. Okay, that's what I observed. Okay, just right. Just a single glance between these two sets of uh, numbers. All right, and then okay. what we can learn from statistics is um, we want to learn some truths from data. Okay, so basically, statistics is all data driven. Okay, uh, instead of uh, emotionally driven as a human being, so we want it to be. Um, nothing to do with emotion and detachment. Right. All right. So can you state clearly the problem that the farmer wants to solve? So basically, I think the farmer wants to know whether with fertilizer and then he's getting a better harvest or not. Okay. Right. From um, the data. And how has the farmer tried to make a fair comparison? Um, two plots of land in the same farmers. So the same skill set and uh, almost the same condition, one with fertilizer and one without fertilizer. So I would say it's a pretty fair comparison. So how could the farmer make sure that the selection was at random? So to ensure randomness, okay, so what you do is um, you don't pick a certain area of a plot of land, okay? You just randomly pick from uh, either the front and then the middle and then the back, all right? So yeah. that ensure randomness, okay? So basically this, the third statement here is, or the third question here is, when you want to know something, learn something from your data, you need to ensure randomness, okay? Otherwise, otherwise, your this data set is called bias, okay? okay. By the way, I just read. Uh, I just read. Uh, I just read a news article from uh, Singapore Street Time. Uh, it talks about. Um, so let me also share with you uh, the news article. I don't need the news article, but uh, since we are talking about randomness, I just want you to uh, appreciate the importance of uh, randomness. So uh, I think the article says it of 10 Singaporean right. are okay to pay more for essential services. So basically this is the this is the title of that article. Okay. Right. So it seems to me like 80% of the 80% of Singaporeans are okay to pay more, okay? But I think just look at the headline itself doesn't tell us much because the thing we need to ask ourselves is, by the way, the survey is done by, um, is done by uh, uh, Straits Times, okay? Can I ask, do you read Straits Times? No, I don't read newspaper anymore. Okay, very good. So you don't read, okay? So you don't read. Uh, I don't read as well, okay, and especially I don't read uh, Straits Times, okay, at all. So you see, in fact, those who who accept their survey, what do you think? Who will accept their survey? I don't know. Okay, let, 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 the let, people that buys the buys the the paper. So meaning, so the the, the first thing is. The group that must read Straits Time, 
All right? Yeah. And then not only they have to read Straits Times, okay? they have to, they have to what? They have to read and accept. Okay? So this is read, so it's a larger group. And then those who read and accept. Accept. Right. To take the survey or accept to be interviewed. Probably have be, a lot of money and a lot of That time. will be a smaller group, right? Yeah. Okay. And what do you think? What do you think who will accept to be interviewed? Uh, probably that, people that have time. Yep. They, they must have time, right? I don't think I, um, I'm okay to, uh, to be interviewed if uh, I'm not paid to do so, right? So right. let's assume um, this group of people who accept to be interviewed, they are either paid or voluntary. And right. this, so that means this set of people will be a very small, will be a very small set of people a very small set of Singapore population. Right. Okay. And when you have a very small set of Singapore population, then it's very hard to ensure fairness. Right. Right. And it's very hard to ensure randomness. Okay. So just now you talk about um, those who have the time. Okay. So I am very sure those who work, they don't have time. Okay, so those right. who have time are the are the ones uh, who are basically retired, right? But yeah, meaning they they interview the retired Singaporeans, right? So how can they ensure fairness and randomness in that case? Okay, they cannot. So with this example, eight of ten Singaporeans are okay to pay more for essential services. So I would like to take this survey results and try to e illustrate to you, okay, the importance of um, fairness and randomness, okay. So to me, this so-called the survey conducted and the results, okay, the results, um, the results are de declared by straight time. I don't think it's a very representative result, okay especially from my, my point of view, all right? That's why yeah. over here, it says the farmer makes sure that his selection is at random. So the randomness is important. Fairness is also important, all right? right. So what is the, what's the best way of organizing this data, all right? So that means there are many ways to look at data, okay? So for these two sets, you can actually look at the average number. That's one way, right? You guys look at the average number. You can compare the average number between these two sets. And you guys, you can also look at um, the, the mode number. That means the one that appeared the most or the median. All right. So there are many ways to look at data. Okay. And what are the super, suitable method to display, right? So to display, so you can actually make use of a bar chart, a pie chart, and a histogram. Okay, so there are many ways. You know, are there any abnormally high or low result that how should they be treated? So those abnormally high or abnormally low results. So sometimes they might be the abnormally or the outliers. All right. Yeah. So how should we treat those data points? Do we ignore it or do we consider it? Okay. Oh. And then next, how can we best describe the most typical plot size? Like whether you want to use the mode number or median or your this um, mode median and what else? I remember there's one more mode median. I uh, mean, mean is the average, yeah. So how can we best describe the spread? Spread means how wide, how how wide is the range? Okay, that means uh, the minimum and the, the the maximum. That is our range. And can the farmer make a reasonable conclusion from his investigation? Yeah. So. Given all these questions, then that is what we want to answer with our statistics. All right? right. So there are a lot more things you can gain insights from all this data. 
So we want to get a data-driven insight. Okay. Now, let's. Okay, so you have a population, right? Population. So a collection of individuals about which we want to draw conclusions. So it seems to me, the population survey by the Straits Times just now. I don't think they have a very good population, right? Because they are only talking about um, those people who are willing to take their surveys and people yeah. who are free to take their surveys. So that set of people is very small. Okay? So they aren't representative enough. All right? So right. the census. Census is from the entire population. All right? So the census is usually done by the government. Okay? Or government, um, government right. uh, led agencies. All right? Sample. Yeah. Sample is a smaller, smaller uh, set of, yeah, it's a smaller set. All right. So this yeah. sample, so if I want to um, do the survey better, so I can ensure randomness by taking, I, I want to survey a engineer. I also want to survey a retiree. I also want to survey a student. I also want to survey a CEO, uh, government, uh, government sector workers. So to ensure randomness in my sample, right? You don't just want to interview the retirees, right? Because it's so biased. Okay? Yeah. So you need to take a sample which can ensure randomness. Survey. Yeah, we talked about survey just now. Data. Data is what you get from the survey. Okay. So parameter, so parameter are some uh, numerical quantity, okay? Like the, the mode number or the mean or the median. So those are numerical quantity, all right? So statistic, statistics here, we can also talk about standard deviation and uh, the spread and all those, all right? And then the distribution. Distribution uh, deals more with all this shape. So this is quite symmetrical. For the first one, over here is positive skew, so it's biased to the left, and for this is biased to the right, so it's negative skew, right? Outliers, outliers are those uh, exceptionally high or exceptionally low values, all right? So they are called outliers, all right? So these are just some general information you learn about statistics, okay? So you have the discrete numerical variable, so number of people in a car is a discrete numerical variable because you can't have 1.2, right? You cannot have 1.2 for people, right? No. Get, yeah, so basically you have either one or you have 20 or you have 25, you know? You can't have like 20.5. You can't, you just can't. Okay. And then the score for test is also, yeah, 20 or something like that, okay? Seldom we have uh, half marks these days. For continuous variable, it's more like you want to measure the temperature. All right, you want to measure the temperature, okay? Um, or you want to measure the, 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 the height of somebody or the height of a group of people, okay? So the height is, can be continuous and the temperature of a room is, it is also continuous, all right? And then organization and display of numerical data. So that is like how we can organize the data. So back to this example, this is a very, very bad way to display your data, all right? Okay. Just listing them down is a very, very bad way to uh, organize the data. So there are better ways to uh, present your data. Depends on the needs, all right? All right, so uh, we have learned how to use a column graph, and this is a frequency histogram. All right, so column graph is for discrete data and continuous data. We need to use a frequency histogram. All right, so now case study. So, uh, by the way, this set of data is arranged in such a manner is ranked from the lowest to the highest number. So the lowest is two uh two hundred and forty four point six, the highest is two hundred and seventy seven point five. So it's ranked from the lowest to the highest. All right. So this is one way of uh, grouping your data 
and displaying their data, right? Instead of just um, display randomly. Right. Okay. So given given this uh, this table of data from the lowest to the highest, you can actually further further group group them into a table. So this is your frequency uh, data table, right? So you right. give them a range, and within this range, you want to find out how often that particular number appears in that range. So for this range, you only have one. For this range, you have three. And then once you get this frequency out, you can actually start to see the percentage relative frequency. So how do you get it? You just use one, and then um, total is 30. So it's a one over 30. So you get 300, all right? right? So three over 30, you will get 10. So to, to get this relative frequency, right, it's easier if you use uh, Excel, okay? You will do it yeah. very fast, all right? So once you get this already, can you see this is your frequency histogram and this is your relative frequency histogram. Can you see um, yeah. there is not much difference? There is not much difference. The only difference is in the vertical axis. This frequency histogram is how often that number appears. And for the relative frequency histogram, how what is the percentage that appears? Right? So seems to me the range of 260 and 265, okay, the the frequency percentage is quite high for 260 and 265. Okay, and then the, the the lower bound, which is 240 to 245, is so much less. And of course, 275 and 280, even, even less. So what's wrong? Okay, so you, you start to see you have this, so you have this set of data uh, randomly randomly display and then you get it into a frequency data table and you can also get it into a frequency histogram and then this is called a stem and leaf diagram okay right. so how do you read this is you have a 31 36 and 37 right so now yeah. let's demo with an example okay let me demo with an example okay This one. So how? Uh, manage to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is the exercise. Okay. So a frequency table for the heights of a basketball squad is given. So within this, by the way, within this height. Okay. So there is only one. Okay. And then yeah. with, within this range, eight of them. Okay. So explain why height is a continuous variable. Okay, height is a continuous variable because um, you, you, you might have somebody of uh, 1.78 meter, right? And then you might have somebody is 2.01 meter. All right? So that's why it's a continuous variable. B, construct a frequency histogram for the data. Pretty simple, right? So to construct that, the horizontal axis will be given by your this height. All right. Right. And then it seems it seems to me uh, I need to draw a longer. I need to draw it longer because I need to start from 170, and then 175, and then 180, 185. 90, 195, 200, and 205. So this is my oriental axis. Right? Yeah. So for this vertical axis, it should be frequency. All right? So uh, 170, 175, so 
between these two, you will get one. So the highest number is 11. So break it down to one. Or you can take two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So one is here. So it's from here to here. So this is your one. All right? Yeah. And 75 to 180 is eight of them. So it's this here. All right, eight of them. And then you have nine of them for the next range. So nine of them is somewhere here. All right. Yeah. And 11 for the next range. So nine again for the next range. Then three for the next range. Three is somewhere here. And then three for the next range. Yep. So this is, this should be your uh, frequency histogram. Right. Which is here. So which is your part B. And then the axis should be carefully marked and labeled. So uh, this would be the height. In, in, in what, in CM, and then this is a frequency, okay? And uh, you should include the heading for the graph. So the heading for this is what? Uh, we are talking about the basketball squad. Okay, so I will call it the, uh, the height frequency histogram of a basketball court, I mean a basketball squad. All right. Now, what is the modal class? Modal, what is the meaning of mode? Do you still remember? Mean and median. So what's the meaning of these three? Do you still remember? The mode is the most. Yes. What's the most of the number? Correct. So the mode is uh, 185 to 190, 90, yes, because we have 11 of them. Okay, so you just need to look at the histogram, so it's clearly, it's clearly this one, right? Yeah. Okay, because it's the tallest in terms of the height of the column. And then explain what this means. So basically it means, um, um, most of the people are in this range, right? Yeah. Let's describe the distribution of the data. I think the distribution of the data is quite, um, I would say is, uh, is a bit biased. Is it biased? Or is it biased? So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven of them. And then the, the middle one is the, the highest. And I will say they are quite evenly distributed. Or use, use the term we learned just now is called symmetric. Okay, symmetric means um, you have a, uh, so let's say if this is the, let's say this is the line of your inflection. So this side, and this side is quite symmetrical. All right? All right. Yeah, so we are talking about uh, here. Yeah, this one's symmetrical. Okay? So the division is quite symmetrical. You can actually use one of these to uh, explain the distribution. Evenly distributed is also um, symmetrical. Okay? But uh, well, let's use the, this term, symmetrical. All right? Okay. So I just demonstrated to you um, this 14A. All right, pretty simple, right? Yeah. Okay, measuring the center of data. Okay, so you can get a better understanding of data if we can locate the middle or the center, right? So there are three statistics that 
uh, used to measure the center. Okay, they are mode, mean, and median. Mode is the one that have that appears the most. What's the meaning of mean? Do you still remember? Just the average. Yes. Median is the the number in the middle. Very good. Okay. Median is the number in the middle. Okay. And sometimes, uh, if we are talking about a range, right? We are talking about a range. It's also the the middle range. Okay. Instead yeah. of just instead of number, um, we can also talk about a median range. All right. So very nice. Okay. Uh, this is the symbol to represent the mean of a sample, and this is a symbol to represent the mean of a population. Okay. So. A population means a much much bigger sample. Okay, right. sample is just like okay. Let's say you have um, okay. Let's say you have um, we have five million people in Singapore, so that's our population, right? Yeah. So if we want to conduct a survey that ensures a randomness and fairness, so um, we want to take um, the students. The workers, the retirees, and yeah, we want to cover um, a range of people of different ages, okay? So that yes. we can ensure randomness. Because sometimes when you do a survey, it's impossible to take everybody's opinion, right? Five yeah. million of them is impossible. So, but we can actually take in a sample, probably like um, a few thousand. All right, of people of different ages, uh, and uh, religions and races, so that we can ensure the randomness and fairness of our our this uh survey. All right, right. So example is a smaller smaller group of people, okay, from the population. All right. So now median is the middle value. Yeah, very good. So uh, let's look at a uh, let's look at a uh, question. All right. So this is a question here. He says this is the data gained from this uh, Ethan Morial while he was here for the golf championship, and uh, the data is that was as follow. So enter the data in the graphic calculator to a list and use the statistics package supplied. Oh, you can actually make use of your graphical calculator and get all this done in seconds. Right? Yeah. So what they say is get this into the graphical calculator, you can produce a frequency histogram easily. Okay? All right? And then comment on the shape of the distribution. So once you uh once you have this um uh graph out, right? Then you will start to see whether the the graph, the histogram is a symmetrical one, or is a positively skewed, or is a negatively skewed. Okay, so that's how you comment. The median and the mean. The median, I think we can find from this manually, but if you can use graph um, technology, go ahead and use your technology. Okay, and then for the mean, is also the mean. Of course, we can calculate it uh, manually, but it takes a lot of work. Because you have to add these all up, and then you need to divide the number of all these, so it can be a bit of um, a bit intensive, okay, manually and intensive, all right. So compare the mean and the median. Is the mean and so how do you decide whether you use a mean or you use the median? Oh, by the way, uh, your this PDF does not allow uh, writing. Yeah, also mine doesn't allow writing. Right yeah, well. but anyway, uh, I think it's uh, uh, it's forbidden. So we have some some law or something. So anyway, um, like copyrights and stuff. Anyway, compare the mean. So mean versus median. When do you use okay? When do you use mean and when do you use median? when you want to have a more accurate measure of the center.
So which one is more accurate? Uh, me. Okay. Which one is more accurate? So to to look at this, okay. To explain which one you should pick, right? Okay. Let's go to Google and take note. Okay, I think we are more interested in the mean or the median. Um, what is the mean GDP per capita of China? Do you know what is the mean about GDP? Huh? Seven, I think it's about 7,000. Uh, I know they are, I think it's about 10, about 10K USD. But anyway, let's take a look. About 7 so. Okay. Uh, Oh, by the way, uh, oh, yeah, close to 10,000 already. This is 2018, by the way. Hello. Hello. So 2018, China already has reached close to 10,000 USD already. Oh. All right. Nice. So um, you underestimated China. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So what's, what's the median then? Let's, let's take a look at the median. Do they provide median? I'm not too sure if they provide median. Ah, can you see? Okay, let's click on this. Okay, the figure shows that China's average real per capita income is this. Ah, so this is the average. Okay, 12K. Well, that's pretty decent, you know? Hello. Hello. Can you see? Yeah. Or, or we can even take a look at this. Can you see this statement? It says, for the world, average real per capita is 2K, uh, 20K. And then the median is only 13K. So what does that mean? They are so different. They are so different. So what does that mean? And similar, similarly, the average for China is 21k yuan, and then the median is 18k yuan. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, let's pick these two out. All right, this is getting interesting. Let me uh, insert that, okay? So this is for the world. All right, this is for the world. So let's pick China as well. Let me see. So uh, we use a provincial level consumer price in the real disposable income. Oh, by the way, this number is disposable income. Okay, they are not GDP, yeah? disposable okay. income. You know what's the meaning of disposable, disposable income? Yeah, the money you have left after paying taxes. Uh, yeah, something like that. That means uh, the money you are free to use. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, so take a look at this together. Let's see if we can gain some insight from this. Okay, first thing first, let's take a look at the, the GDP per capita for the world. All right, so we make it. Pitch with it. No, sorry. Uh, so here it is. So for the world, this is for the world. It says the world as a whole. All right, this is for the world. So it says the average real capital GDP was like 20K. That is the mean. 
and then uh, the median is 13k. Can you see there is a difference of 7k? There's a lot of difference between the mean and the median. Can you see that? Yes. So, what do you think? So, which one, which, which of this uh, matrix tells us a better picture of how rich the world is or how poor the world is? So, uh, median. So, in this case, you want to pick the median? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so that means if there is a huge difference of 7K, so something is not right somewhere, right? Right? Yeah. So why why the mean is 20K, but the median is 13K, okay? So what caused, what caused the huge difference here, okay? So one of the explanation is, okay, you know, uh, I think people have been talking about the rich, uh, poor income inequality gap, right? They call it the inequality gap, right? So I think as the inequality gap gets larger, yeah. I think we will tend to see a large difference here between these two. Right. Simply because, simply because, if we have many rich, okay, and then we have many poor, so basically we have too many extremes, okay, we will tend to have a very skewed mean, meaning we will have a very biased mean, okay. So in that case, we are better served to use a median as right. a more representative number. Let me illustrate to you with a simple Excel data set. All right. So, so let's say I have uh, 10 students. Okay, let's say I have 10 students. And let's talk about some score, right? So let's say the total scores, okay? Total scores for for a test is 10, all right? Yeah. So let's try to be a bit extreme, right? Let's try to be a bit extreme. Okay, so what is the average here? So the average is 3.2, right? Yeah. So what's the median? I think there is a function called median. Yes, thank you very much. Excel One. is good. Okay, so the median is Q. Okay, so based on this, I, I can even test with this. I can even test with this. All right. So okay. can you see, if you have two extremes, meaning you have some very high scores, okay, and you have some very, I think you have a lot more low score, right? And then what you see, you will see that the difference between the average and median is quite huge, right? Especially yeah. when you have two, uh, very extremes, right? So in this case, I think it's better to use median to represent this set of data, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, so similarly, for the income or the GDP here, I think it's better to use the median, I agree with you, it's better to use a median here, okay? It's a more uh, representative number, all right? But in so that, that means what? That means China is still below the median. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, surprisingly, China is still below the median. Come on. 
but China isn't very far off. Probably like developing, 2K. Developing, developing, developing. Yeah, I mean, China isn't too far off. Probably like 2K. Because 2018, China has already reached almost 10K. So right now it's 2020. So I think China should should be like pretty near. Okay. Probably but, not, given the coronavirus. Uh, in fact, because of the coronavirus, the entire world GDP per capita will decrease synchronously. Okay, the entire the entire world economy is in, in sync. So the world drops, China drops, uh, or China drops, the world drops. Okay? China increases, the world also increases. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So now let's look at the average disposable income. So it, it seems to me, okay, you just look at this number, that's how, how ridiculous this number is. The GDP, right? You still remember, right? It's about 10, it's about 10K, right? USD, yeah? GDP per capita. So this is you times uh, seven. So that's like 70K uh, yuan GDP. Right? But you look at their you look at their average disposable income. That is only what? 20k. So what's wrong here? Can you tell me what's wrong here? Huh? I don't know. Can you tell me what's wrong here? Or can 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 we try to try to understand what's wrong here? Huh? So a, a lot of it is not disposable. Yeah. So you mean like fifty k? You know, fifty k yen has gone somewhere has gone to somewhere. Oh, by the way, we are using Zoom, you know, Zoom can actually, if we, I hopefully, hopefully, hopefully Zoom will not, uh, will not block my account because I'm talking about China and especially I'm, we are discussing about what's wrong with China. Because recently I think Zoom blocked some accounts because they talk about the Tiananmen Square event on Zoom. So that's why they get banned. So hopefully I don't get banned. Okay. So what's what's wrong here? 50k yuan has gone. I mean I'm looking at this. I I mean I, I realize it now. So what do you think? Where this 50k yuan has gone? To like rents. Rent? Uh, you mean the, like you're talking about you know the housing loan and stuff? Are you talking about the housing loan? Yeah. Yeah, for some is housing loan, for some is rent, and then taxes. Anything else? So you are telling me like they only retain twenty like twenty to thirty percent. Yeah, they only retain twenty to twenty uh twenty percent to thirty percent. Yeah. My goodness, so that means whatever you, I mean, whatever the, the GDP produces, uh, the people only get to retain 20 to 30 percent. Wow. Actually, I want to look at, uh, I want to look at the number for, for Singapore to have a better comparison. But this is a very surprising uh, statistic to me, honest, on, on, honestly speaking. Right. Yeah. Does this sound surprise to you? Uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> okay. Okay. Talk about their housing prices. Yeah. And uh, cost of living. Okay. Not really. Okay. All right. But uh, very good uh insight from here.
Okay, so let's go back to this uh, set of data. I just explained to you uh, when we use mean and when we use median and uh, what, is the, what is the benefits of using mean? What is the benefits of using median? Okay, it really depends. Okay, if you have two extremes, I think median is a better number, all right? And if you have some uh, evenly distributed, that means symmetrical um, distribution, I think mean is a good, good enough measure, right? Man. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's take a five minute break, and then okay. uh, we come back, and then we talk more about um, statistics. All right. Sure. Mm. So I will uh, switch off my camera and mute my audio.
Hello. Okay. All right. Let me get rid of this. Share and then share my screen. Yeah. So uh, we were talking about um, statistics and uh, you realize there is a, a huge difference. All right. Uh, between the, the GDP per capita and uh, disposable income per capita in China. So 50k yuan has gone somewhere. So mainly the housing housing loan and rents and taxes. And uh, I guess uh, the living cost is also quite high over there. Yeah. Okay, the living cost. All right. So that is where the... So people only uh, get to retain 20 to 30% of their, uh, this is GDP per capita, all right? So let's move on. Mm, so now, uh, over here, okay. Just now we talked about group data, meaning range, right? Over here is ungrouped data, so it's, uh, individual data points all right so for this I think uh, for ungrouped data you don't have too many data points so it's easier for you so it's easier for you all right if you have uh, too many data points I think it's easier for you to group them together and analyze them as a group okay so over here you just have like 21 data points so it's easier to manage right as ungrouped data but let's imagine you have 221. So I think it's better to group them and then analyze them as a group, okay? In terms of range, right? So over here, uh, for ungrouped data, you can actually use this uh, dot and plot diagram. This is a dot and plot diagram. So you, 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 you have seen the stem and leaf, and then this is the dot and plot diagram, all right? Okay, so let's um, take a look at uh, question two. All right. So uh, for this, I think it's, it's uh, much better to use uh, Excel. Okay. Data is the, uh, for data analysis, I think is the best to use Excel, right? So you have your A, set A, and then you have your set B. And uh, you have your, so A, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8. They are almost the same, except the last one. You notice? A and B, they are almost yeah. the same except the last yeah. number. Yeah. They're not the same either. Though. Yeah. They are almost the same except the last number. So let's find out uh, the mean and the median. That's the mean. So the median is all right. So similarly, which I don't need so many decimal places to analyze it. Okay, all right. So can you see the mean and uh, can you see the mean and the median? So the mean and the median, so they are here, right? So explain why the mean uh, of data set A is less than the mean of data set B because of the, this, because of 10 and 15, right? Over here, yeah. right? And then the median is the same because uh, regardless of what, what your, what your this two is, right? Uh, what your extreme values are, 
all you can, all you are concerned uh, about is the middle number. Okay. Yeah. So how many how many numbers are here? Let me see. There are thirteen of them, right? So that means one to six is the. So you should be looking at the seventh. So this is the medium. This is the median, the middle number. All right. Okay. So there is no difference for the median between the set A and set B. All right. Uh, but for the mean, um, there is a difference. Okay, because there is a difference in the last data points for both set A and B. All right. So pretty simple example. All right. So you know that. You know, try out a question on uh, Excel. I think you have your Excel program, right? In your, in your. Yeah. Program. All right. Right. So let's uh, try one. Let's try one. Hmm. Um, Which question? Yeah. Let's try this question three. So let me just uh, get this. Oh. And actually, share share your screen on your uh, Excel. I will stop share. You want to do a screen capture of the question first? Yeah. Before I stop share. Okay. Done that. Yep, I stop share. So please share share screen. See Do you have the right to share? Let me see. Hmm. Okay. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Why can't I expand? Oh, there it is. Try to share something first, just to make sure you can share. Start the screen sharing. Yeah, you can share. Nice. Yeah. Got it. That's that's nice. Okay. You can actually paste that uh, picture, just overlay on top of your this Excel program. Wait, yours is a Mac, but you're using a Windows system, right? No, it's a Mac. It's a Mac system? Yeah. Then how come your snipping tool is so Windows? Oh, this is Which a picture. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought your, this is a picture. Okay, I get it. I thought the snipping tool, you have the snipping tool program in your Mac. Okay. No. Okay. 23. Yeah, just click the yeah. Later you just add the K at the back. 23. 23. Uh, five, 23. It looks like you are ranking them, huh? Uh, this laptop is getting older. It's, sometimes it types twice. Oh. Uh. Okay, yeah. that is the problem of the what butterfly keyboards, right? <laughs> I'm changing to a PC. I want to change to PC, but it's a bit early. Okay, just take the opportunity to sell this away and get some money back and use the money to go for a, a, a desktop. Yeah, I'm going to university. So. I like I'm going to university, so I want to like keep it because I still need to use it in class. So I just want to buy a PC. All right. You know, these days, if you really want to like uh, use a use a digital device for class, I think an iPad Pro is more than enough. Seriously, 
Okay, I don't like iPad. Mm. Uh, main mode, uh, medium. iPad, iPad Pro is so powerful these days. I guess it's more than enough to replace a, a laptop for just a normal user. Nice. Oh, just to share with you, you don't have to rank the data, but of course, if you want to rank them, go ahead, but you don't have to. Explain why the mode is an unsatisfactory measure of the middle in this case. Why? Because it's not the average. Because the, the mode, the node is the lowest of the bunch. So to, to measure the middle in this case, right? So um, the mode is still not very satisfactory because um, if you take the mode, right, as the middle, uh, clearly, the, I mean, clearly in this case, I think mean is a better measure of the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Median isn't a very uh, good one. And then a mode is also isn't a very good one to measure the middle. Yeah. All right. Yep. Oh, I just explained the class C as well. Right? Yeah. Mm. So um in this case, mean is a better uh, measure of the middle. All right. Okay, very, very simple. Do you have this uh, PDF question with you? I mean, do you have the PDF uh, with you? It's a SL2. Uh, no. Your textbook. Okay, then uh, I, will, I will share. Let's find a more interesting question. Uh, multiple following questions. Oh, we can share simultaneously. It's all, all right, all right, all right. So just don't do anything. Let me try to share multiple. Uh, how do I share that if I want to share at the same time? Side by side. I'm also, oh, it's the first time I, I tried the. Okay, let me try it out. Oh, I can share already. Hold on. I'm sharing as well, right? I don't know. Uh, can you see what I share? I can't see you right now. I'm because I'm I'm sharing. You are sharing, okay. And then uh no, let me try or sharing. So, it's all right. Let me try. We are exploring as well. Okay. I am sharing also. I'm also start sharing. Can you see what I share? No, I can't. I can't see what you share. Oh, okay. So, um, so that means it doesn't work very well. All right, so it's all right. So I have to stop. Uh, you have to stop sharing then. Okay. So, so, stop stop. Sharing. so sorry. Yeah. Without without stopping, I can't see uh, what you. Probably that is a pro version. That's how they want you to move to pro. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. Let's do a more interesting question instead. Which one is nice? Okay, what about question 10? Uh, yeah. let me make it bigger so that uh, you can see. Can do a screenshot of a pen, question pen. My God, I'll just uh, just copy. Yep, just grab a question pen. One six four zero zero. Mm -hmm. 
So what is the mean and the median? Still doing it. Still doing it. But it looks like kind of like quite cheap, right? To buy a house. Uh, I don't, I think it's the average. If you want to buy a house in, uh, in the US. You, no, you just look at these figures. It's about like 150K, I would say. 150K US is, uh, hey, it's less than 300K, come on. I mean, like in the U.S., I think that that's about the average. If you live in like a suburb, remote town, you mean the remote areas? Yeah. Okay. Just, just tell me, like, what kind of areas? Los Angeles? No, like uh, Detroit. No, I mean Detroit probably. Have you heard of like uh, Iowa? Somewhere like that. No, it's like a very shitty place in a very shitty state. Okay. In a, like a countryside. You can, yeah, Mi the countryside. Mi Minneapolis, <laughs> the one, the one that, uh, they, they, the police killed the no, I'm saying, I'm saying like, uh, you know, Teterboro? I don't know. It's a very shitty town outside of New York. So wow. it's probably... Yeah. How far is it away from New York then? About an hour, 30 minutes. Uh, by, by driving your own car? By driving your own car. Oh, okay. So, so you get nothing. It's basically like a little countryside village. I mean, it's all right, right? I mean, you don't want to live in New York. It's super expensive and it's super crowded noisy yeah. right so it's pretty good right you want to get a you want to get far away from new york but you still want to work in new york within an hour uh, ride so is the mean by the way have you have you found a mean selling price uh it's Mean selling price. It's uh one six three seven seven zero. Ah, so one six three. And then the mean and the median? Median is one four seven two zero zero. So my goodness, I mean it's it's really cheap. I mean oh my god. What what does the question say? So it says comment on the result. So basically there is a difference oh, between the mean and the median. We're like British countryside or outside of Birmingham. Some stuff like huh? that. Well, well, it's like a cottage. You can buy a cottage for that price. Cottage means it's a, a one level and... Um, yeah, 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 those, those stuff. And you got your garden and you got your backyard and all those? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good, man. No wonder, no wonder you want... Okay, what about Canada? Is it about the same price? No, no, no. I'm not talking about Toronto. I'm not talking about uh, Toronto. Yeah, I'm not talking about Toronto. What about just where, where, where you are going? Where, where you are staying in Canada? Uh, Nova Scotia. It's, uh, it's it's more than that. It's not that bad. Which which place in Canada you are going? Uh, Halifax. Wow, I have not heard of it. Now, what is the the price, the selling price, like over there. It's like two two fifty. Two fifty USD. Yeah. For 
for a so called a, a, a bungalow, like two levels with a garden and backyard and all, all those things. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, it's about two fifty. So it's not too bad, right? I mean, in Singapore, I think I will I will say most of the Singaporeans can afford a house over there, more than a house. I would say. Yeah. Or at least two houses over there. All right. Okay. No wonder you guys want to move there. It's not so expensive to get a house there. Okay. I'm a thing of that. So, which measure would you use if you were a vendor wanting to sell your house? So you are selling house. You want to use the average one or you want to use the medium one? Mm. Of course, you want to use a higher price, right? Because you want yeah. to sell at a higher price. All right. Does it make sense? Yeah. Mm. But as a buyer, okay, as a buyer, of course you want to use the lower price because you always want to get a bargain, right? Yeah. Oh, this is something interesting today I learned, yeah. The price the selling price of houses in the US and Canada are not so it's not crazy not so crazy like the Asia. Yeah. And by the way, really like I think Asians really care about this stuff. Pardon? I think it's just Asians we care about this stuff. It's not that we care about it, but you know the price, whether you care about it or you don't care about it, we pay the price, okay? To get an apartment. I mean I'm getting an apartment. Okay. In Singapore. I'm getting an apartment. Okay. It's not that I care about it, but that's the market price I have to pay. Okay, I wish I don't care about it, but I still have to pay a lot for the for an apartment here. Okay, pretty interesting. Today I learned something from the US, something in China as well. It's supposed to be income. All right. Okay, let's continue. Let's move on. Okay, over here, the measure of the center from other sources. All right. So over here, they talk about uh, the mode, the mean, and what else? And the median. And uh, they talk about the cumulative frequency. All right. So let's take a look at um, how you can get the cumulative frequency stuff. All right. Okay, let me just demo with this uh, this example. Let's demo with this example. Okay, so the table below shows the number of aces served by tennis players in their first set of tournaments. So number of aces, um, one of them is four times and blah blah blah. And then how do you get the product? You just times times these two, you get the product. All right. And then this is the sum of the products. This is the sum of the frequency. All right. So they use sum of products divided by the sum of frequency. And you will get what? You will get the, you should remember what is this? You get the mean. Yeah. Sum of products divided by sum of frequency, you get the mean. Okay. And you get this, okay? So let's let me get this out and uh, demonstrate to you um, how you can actually draw a cumulative frequency diagram just based on this. Yeah, it's good to use a. Uh, a grid. All right, so so let's say this is your okay. I need a I need a straight line. Let me see if I can insert a straight line. No, I can't. So it's all right. So let's uh. So uh, number of aces. So you start from uh, one. 
example, let's say this is your two. Uh, every four, I will say every four. So that means uh, start from zero. So every four, so this is three, four, five, and six, and that's all. Okay, so this is your oriental axis. All right, now cumulative frequency. So for number of aces, so that means zero to one, you will hit four. So let's assume, well, I need to reach until 55, so I need to be very careful. So what about this is my five, this is my 10. With, uh, so every two, so this is 20. And we choose 30, and then here's 40. Nope. So 40, and then let me move this. Can I move this? Can I? Never mind. So this is my 50, so it should be somewhere here. Uh, two, okay, so it's somewhere here. This is 50, and then this is. Uh, yeah, all right, here, so there's 60, all right. So for this number of aces one, so cumulative is four, so so it should reach four, so it should be somewhere here. And then uh, number of aces two, it should go to 15, right? So 15 is here, so it should reach here, all right? So three, it should reach, reach 33. So it's, uh, this is 35. Should be somewhere in the middle, slightly more. So this will give you three, so this is that. All right. So for four is 46. Four is 46. So uh, this is 45, so it's slightly more. So it's somewhere here. I'm done until here. So 53, so this is 55. So that's for six. So six is six is fifty-five. This is fifty-five. Alright. So five is fifty-three. So it should be somewhere slightly below. It's here. Alright. So can you see how 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 the cumulative frequency will look like? So it's, it's it goes like this. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. So this is your, uh, so this axis is your cumulative uh, frequency. So this is your cumulative frequency diagram, cumulative frequency um, uh, graph. And then over here is the number of aces. You need to label your, uh, you need to label your axis. And then this is your uh, frequency. Exit. All right. Yeah. All right. So that's how your cumulative frequency diagram will look like. So you, you can actually see that um, as the name suggests, cumulative, the meaning of cumulative means it adds up. Okay. Adds up. So what it means is, let's say zero to one, you have four of them, right? You can see zero to one is four of them. And then from one to two, right? So this is 15. So from one to two, right? You are actually having 11 of them. Right. Yeah. And then for this, this is 33. So from two to three, you have 18 of them. Okay. So if you want to find uh, the interval, Okay, that's how you find the interval. All right. Just take, okay. just take the the last number minus of the in, initial number, then you will get the interval frequency. All right. Okay. So uh, it should add up to uh, it should add up to fifty five. That means the total. All right. Okay. That's your cumulative frequency diagram from this table.
All right, so um, let me just uh, demo with a question four. So in here, question four, families at a school in Australia were surveyed and the number of children in each family recorded. So number of children, so you have five, five families of one, one child, 28 families with two, two children. So let me right. turn on the lights. Pardon? I want to turn on the lights. Ah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Mm, all right. All right. So, uh, five families with one child, 28 families with two children. So, if you are asked to find a mean, uh, what you do is, um, you know, right? How do you find a mean? Is you need to find out what is the, um, so this is your F, this is your S, right? So you need to find out what's your FX first. All right? Because once you find out your FX, so this is this, this is 56, this is 45, this is 32, and this is 10, this is 6. So in order to find out this mean, you need to take the sum of FX. So you add this all up, right? And divide by 59. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But the mode, so the mode is clearly two, right? Because this is, it happens 28 times. Yeah. yeah. The median, the median is, what you need to do is, you need to use, so basically, the median is, you have to, so it's 59, right? So 59, you divide by 2, you will get what? You will get uh, 29 plus 1. Am I right? Yeah, 29 plus 1. No, no, sorry. Remainder 1, I'm so sorry. Remainder 1. Okay? So you have 29 and remainder is 1. So clearly, so that means you have 29 here, 29 here, so that is your median. Right? So where that number lies? So it's here, right? Right? Do you know how to find the median? Uh, 29th. So it will be 2. It'll just yep. be in 2. Exactly. It's 2. Because you split 29 and 29, and then you will have uh, that number here. So it's two in this case. So the average Australia family has 2.2 children. How does this school compare to the national average? So I didn't get the average, so I couldn't do it. So let me get the average quickly. Let me try to just copy this over, see if it helps. All right, so. Uh, 5, 56, 45, 32, 10, and 6. So I need to find the sum of all this divided by 59. This is 2.61. So the average for this school is 2.61. The national average is 2.2. So uh, the average in this school is higher than the national average. All right. So the data set is skewed. Is the skewness positive or negative? So can you tell it's skewed to the to the left, right? Can you see it's more concentrated? Uh, one and two, right? Can you see this? That's more. No. Yeah, can you see it? More concentrated. What do I mean by that? It's this. So over here you have five, right? And then suddenly you have 28. Okay, my five is too big. So, right? And you have your 15, so it should be 
uh, slightly more than half. And then you have eight, and then you have two, and then you have one. So can you, can you see it's slightly like, if this is the middle, right? If this is the middle, can you see that it's skewed towards this side? So it's skewed to the, to the left, right? So if it's skewed to the left, so it means you have something like this, all right? So it's skewed to the left, so it means it's a positive. Positive uh, skewed. So how has the skewness of the data affected the measure of the center? So for, for, for you to have a positively skewed distribution, right? Um, your mean, your mean and median, okay? So your mean will be so much affected by these extremes, okay? Am I right? No, right, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that is how the skewness affect the measure of the center, okay? So in this case, most likely, I think uh, the mode, the mode will be the more representative answer, okay? Which is uh, 28, all right? Because both your mean and median, right, is uh, skewed. The mean is definitely skewed by the, by the positive uh, skewness. And then the median, the median is two. Uh, by the way, uh, the mode is two, and then the median is two, the mean is 2.68. So you can see the mode and the median are quite, they are the same, right? So I will pick median as the, as the answer to represent the center. Right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so um, over here we have the stem and leaf. For question five, we have stem and leaf. And, um, all right, you have other questions? If not, I will leave. Um, so basically we are at um, center of the data, okay? We are at uh, B, okay? So uh, our next lesson, we will uh, talk more about the spread, like how the, whether it's a wide spread or it's a narrow spread uh, for our distribution, all right? Okay. So uh, this lesson we focus more on uh, mode, mean, and median, the three uh, statistics metrics, and of course we also talk about the significance of uh, mode, median, and mean, and when we shall use uh, any of them. Okay, All right. So, and two insights: one of USA, one of uh, China. Right, the disposable income stuff. All right, so if not, then I can uh, actually conclude the day here. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will stop sharing and thank you. Yeah, see you uh, next week. All right, see you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye, right, take care.